Welcome back to Cypress Academy, PSOC 6 101. In the last lesson, I showed you how to build your first PSOC 6 BLE project. In that project, we used a Bluetooth SIG specified service, specifically the immediate alert service. While I was looking through the Bluetooth SIG specifications for a custom service, I couldn't find a Terminator robot service definition anywhere in the spec. And that's a problem because we know we want to control that thing with Bluetooth. So what do we do? Well, the answer to that question is simple. We need a custom service. Is that going to be hard? Nope, not at all. What is this project going to do? When the device turns on, it's going to start advertising. And when there's no connection, the red LED is going to blink. When there's a connection, the red LED is going to turn off and the other side, also called the gap central, will be able to change the brightness of an LED. Simple enough, eh? All right, let's build a project. Start by creating a new PSOC 6 project called 3.2 Simple BLE Peripheral. Next, let's change the build settings to include free RTOS with a heap setting of four and the standard IO redirection. Now, I'll go to the schematic and add the BLE component, a UART, two PWMs, two digital output pins, and two clocks. Let's wire the two output pins to the two PWMs and wire the two clocks to the two PWMs. Now for some configuration. First, let's set up the blinking PWM. Double click it, then change its name to PWM underscore blink. Set the compare value to 500 and the period to 999. Now change the input clock to 1 kilohertz and finally rename the LED to be red. So I'm sure you guys remember from before that this will result in a 1 hertz blinking LED. Let's follow almost the same process for the other PWM circuit. First change the name of the pen to green then change the name of the PWM to be PWM dim. The dim means dimmer. Change the period to 100 and the compare value to zero. We'll leave this clock at the default one megahertz value so that the LED will appear to dim instead of blinking. This circuit is a perfect implementation of a dimmer. And by changing the compare from zero to 100, it will change the brightness from completely off to all the way on. All right, that's pretty cool. Now let's configure the BLE. On the general tab, I'm gonna run this BLE in dual processor mode, just like I did in the last example. The device is going to be a peripheral and only allow one connection. Click on the GAT settings, then right click on the server and select add service. Notice that there's no killer robot service in the list of predefined services. Maybe I'll send a note to Misha and get him to add it as default. All right, just joking again, Misha. In this case, we're going to create a custom service. So select custom service. Right click on the custom service and select rename. Then change the name to LED. Now let's change the name of the custom characteristic to be green. On the other side, remember the gap central or the phone side we want them to be able to write a uint8. So leave this set as uint8 and click write so that the permission will be set as writable. Next, let's add some information so that the other side knows what green means. Right click and add a descriptor, characteristic user description. Then let's type a description like, oh say green brightness zero to 100. Finally, Delete the custom descriptor as it's not needed. Now let's configure the gap settings. First, give this bad boy a name. How about PSOC 6 LED? Then change the advertising settings to general discovery mode so that it will never time out, which wastes a bunch of power, but it certainly makes it easier to find. The last step in the BLE configuration is to set up the advertising packet to have the device name and the fact that it has a custom service, the LED service. Now we'll go to the design-wide resources and configure the pins. 
set the UART to P50 and P51, then the green to P11 and the red to P03. OK, run Generate Application to get PSOC Creator to do its magic. Let's modify the freeartos.h to get rid of the warnings, include semaphores, have more heap, and set the max call to a good priority. Then I'll modify the standard IO underscore user dot H to know about our project, the project dot H, and which UART we're using, UART underscore HW. In order for the system to run in dual core mode, I need to add BLE processing commands to the main underscore CM0P.C. First, launch the controller part of the stack, then infinitely loop and process events. OK. Now we're ready for the main event, the main underscore cm4.c. At the top, I need to have all of the required includes, project.h, freeartos.h, etc. Then I need to declare a semaphore called BLE semaphore. Remember from the last video, I told you that you need to build an event handler. Well, let's do that. In this case, instead of a separate generic event handler and a service specific event handler, the generic event handler will take care of everything. As I told you before, the BLE stack will call this function with an event code, an event parameter to tell you what's happening in BLE land. I'm going to make the code a little bit cleaner by making a variable called write request parameter. I'll tell you about that in just a second. For this project, there are four events that I'm interested in. Stack on, which happens when, oh yeah, the stack turns on. Gap disconnected, which happens when the remote device disconnects. Connection indication, which happens when there's a connection. And write request, which happens when the other side sends you a write request. This event will be generated when a write happens to the green characteristic in our custom LED service. As before, the event handler function is just a big switch statement. So when the stack turns on, or when there's been a disconnection, we're going to do exactly the same thing. Specifically, I'll start blinking the red LED PWM, then I'll start advertising, and finally I'll reset the green LED PWM and disable it. The next case handles the new connection. In this case, I'll turn off the blinking red LED PWM and start up the green LED dimmer PWM. The final case occurs when the other side writes to my device. Up until now, we've only looked at the event codes. Now we need to use the other parameter to the function, which we declared as a void pointer. As you guys remember, a void pointer is just a generic pointer. It can point to anything in memory. Well, in the case of a write request, that pointer is going to point to a structure called the write request parameter. So I'll cast the void pointer to a pointer of type CY, STC, BLE, GAT S, write, command, request. And that's quite the mouthful. It only took me four times to say it in this video. The write request parameter has a bunch of useful information in it, including which GAT characteristic was written by the central. So the next thing I need to do is make sure that the GAP central was actually writing to the green brightness characteristic. If it is, then I extract the value that it wrote, make sure that it's less than 100, remember the value from the PWM, then it will update the compare value in the PWM, which will change the brightness. Finally, I have to call the write response function to send the response. You might remember that in BLE, there's two kinds of writes, a write with response and a write without response. In this case, we've implemented the write with response. Now that I've built the BLE handler, all we have left to do is make the BLE interrupt service routine, the BLE task, and the startup code. I'll start by copying and pasting that code from the last project. It really is almost exactly the same. This time, 
We don't have an IIS callback, so I'll delete that from the task. Then in the main, I'll start the two PWMs. And now, finally, if you're ready for the moment of truth, hit the little chip button and build and program this dog. All right, look, this is good. The red LED is blinking, no connection. The last time I showed you CY Smart on the iPhone, this time I'm going to run it on the PC version. The application communicates using a BLE dongle that is included with this kit. So I'll connect that and then I'll run the application. I'll connect the dongle and then start a scan. P6 LED shows up, so that's good. When I select and click connect, the red LED turns off. Okay, that makes sense. Then I'll click on discover all attributes so that I can see my GAT database. I can read the value for the characteristic user description at the bottom to see that it's the green brightness characteristic. Then, if I click on the characteristic value itself, I can write a new value into the characteristic. I'll start by writing hex 64, which is also known as 100%. Look at the green LED. It's full bright. Hey, that's good. Now let's see here. I'll try hex 10. Yep, it's dimmer, and when I try zero, the green LED goes completely off. I'll put 64 back in for full brightness. And now I'll disconnect. And look, the green goes off and the red starts blinking again. Cool. Now that we know how to build a custom characteristic, in the next video, I'll add BLE to our main controller. Specifically, I'll add characteristics for the two motors so that we can change the position of the robot arm with a remote control. As always, you can post your comments and questions in our PSOC 6 community, or you're welcome to email me at alan underscore haas at cypress.com or tweet me at askiotexpert. Hey, thanks again, and I hope you're having fun.